Good morning, family of fast. Matt Mossman, the Chief Endurance Officer over at Endurly. Have you ever wondered how to calculate your sweat rate in order to determine how much fluid you should be consuming during endurance exercise to avoid dehydration? That is what we are going to discuss today. Now, the research has demonstrated that the sweat rates of well-trained athletes can be anywhere from 50 to 100 ounces per hour. Now, failure to replace some of that fluid lost through sweat can lead to dehydration, which can have a negative impact on performance. So here's how to calculate sweat rate again to help you determine how much fluid you should be consuming during endurance exercise to avoid dehydration. About two hours before endurance exercise, you're going to drink about 16 ounces of fluid. So you go into exercise in a hydrated state. Now, right before exercise, you're going to empty your bowels, you're going to get naked and you're going to weigh yourself and you're going to record that number. From there, you are going to go exercise for one hour. Afterwards, you're going to get naked again. You're going to wipe off any excess sweat and you're going to weigh yourself again and you're going to record that number. Also during this hour, you're going to record how much fluid you consumed and you bring it all together and get your sweat rate loss by doing the following. You're going to take your pre-exercise weight minus your post-exercise weight. You're going to multiply that by 16 and to that, you're going to add how many ounces of fluid you consumed during endurance exercise and that will give you your rate of sweat loss and how much fluid you should be consuming during endurance exercise to avoid dehydration. Now I say how much you should be because in some instances and depending on variables like weather, heat, humidity, your sweat rate might be a lot higher than that number that the sweat rate calculation spits out. For example, I know some elite athletes that have a sweat rate loss of about 60 ounces per hour. And honestly, it's not really too feasible to be able to consume that much fluid to be able to replace all the fluid lost from sweat. So what are you going to do in these circumstances? Before I get to that, I'm just going to say that you don't need to replace all the fluids you lose through sweat during the exercise. I mean, a lot of what's been told about the decreases in performance have been over exaggerated. So again, take home point here is you don't need to replace all the fluids during endurance exercise. Uh, basically, you can still perform well without doing so. So if you don't use your sweat rate calculation to determine fluid consumption, what can you do? Well, there's a couple easy methods that are a little bit simpler to follow and it seems to be just as effective demonstrated by the research. One is first to come into exercise in a hydrated state. And usually this will involve drinking a carbohydrate based sports drink with electrolytes. So you want to drink about 16 ounces of fluid about two hours before endurance exercise. So you come into it in a hydrated state. Then for every hour of exercise that you're going to do, you're going to want to shoot for anywhere for 16 to 32 ounces of fluid an hour. Again, this will depend on things like heat, humidity, and generally uh, just the weather. And this range of the 16 to 32 ounces will have you pretty covered to prevent, you know, really, really major dehydration and help you keep performing strong. Now, the second method you can resort to is something called drinking to thirst. And it's exactly what it sounds like is you just drink when you're thirsty. <clears throat> now, a lot of people say that's a big problem. I need to be on a regimented drinking schedule to stay hydrated. But the research would actually disagree with you. There was a research study that came out that compared drinking to thirst to drinking on a regimented schedule. And what they found is there's no significant differences in performance. So drink to thirst, just drink when you're thirsty. Don't drink when you're not. So those two methods may be just as effective uh, compared to calculating sweat rate loss and drinking the amount of fluids suggested by that. There's also a couple different supplements that may help you to stay hyperhydrated. Uh, one being electrolytes. You know, electrolytes don't have anything to do with cramping. They basically help maintain bodily fluid balance. And more specifically, they help your body hold on to more water so you're not losing as much through sweat. Now, the second one is glycerol and I'm going to reference something here in terms of how much you should be doing. So with glycerol, 
you should ingest 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight and 26 milliliters per kilogram body weight of fluid 60 minutes prior to exercise. So that's one supplement that has a decent amount of research behind it showing it can kind of hyperhydrate you, especially if you're a heavy sweater and you use a lot, lose, excuse me, a lot of fluid through sweat. The other supplement you could look at is something called betaine. And if you want to try this, you want to take about 2.5 grams daily. <clears throat> Timing doesn't matter. Research also suggests that taking creatine monohydrate might also act as a hyperhydrator. So those are some strategies basically to help you stay hydrated during endurance exercise outside of using the numbers you get from a sweat rate calculation. So that is all I have for today, my endurance friends. If you want other videos like this on endurance training, nutrition, and supplementation, subscribe to our Endure Elite YouTube channel or head on over to the Endure Elite blog at www.endureelite.com. Get social with us on Instagram and Facebook where you'll find 60 second brain bombs of these type of topics. And until next time, my endurance friends, stay fueled, stay focused, and stay fast.